from insane to great to dog shit. I've tried a massive amount of builds this season, and on top of that, also checking out all of your favorite content creators out there for one reason. To provide you with this highly inspirational top 10 builds to play in season four. And while most tier lists only check out the top dogs when it comes to builds, I'll do it in an unusual way. Yep, I'll throw in some actual fun builds as well, because you know, it's a game and you can have fun when playing games. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So let's check out how these amazing builds work, shall we? And we'll start with the Barb. This class currently has what is objectively the best build in the game, just barely surpassing the thin rogues out there. It's of course the Thorns build, and do not hit me cook this shit up already in the PTR. So what is making this build this amazing then? Clearing tier 130 pits without the elixir of holy cringe. Well, for starters, these are his stats, El Mao. So not only is he 100% unkillable, he also benefits from the maximum life in Thorns damage by utilizing Challenging Shout and Strategic Challenging Shout. And on top of that, the Razor Plate received a massive buff in Season 4, as well as Barbs now being able to temper Thorns while fortified on gear. With all of these things combined, you're getting hundreds of thousands of thorns which can be unleashed with the needle flare aspect. And if you're wondering why the man is jumping around like a hyperactive child on Red Bull, it's for a solid reason, the Rumble Glyph. By stacking Earthquake Duration and transforming Leap into an Earthquake ability, you're able to get hundreds of multiplicative damage with ease. Okay, so that's the thorns, which is boring as shit, but you know, it gets the job done. So let's check out an amazing speed running build instead. The only build that could potentially compete with how brain dead Thorns is, the Whirlwind Barb. This could potentially be my favorite build in season four, and it's quite strong clearing up to at least pit 85. So if you don't need to compensate for a micro penis by pushing high pits, then this build is definitely for you. By slapping on the devilish aspect along with fierce winds and dust devils aspect, you'll be covered in dust devils and possibly something else. The main source of twisters in this build does however come from the devilish aspect, spawning twisters for each 100 fury generated. Hmm, so how in the hell are we able to generate enough fury to spawn these many twisters then? Well that's easy, but before we continue, I have something special for you guys. I've been playing this game on and off for a long time now, and you should definitely do it as well. And it's no other than Raid Shadow Legends. But bro, that's just an awful mobile game, right? Right? Oh my man, you couldn't be more incorrect. The depth in this game is actually insane. Way more than, you know. It's a strategy game with both PvE and PvP available on both mobiles and PC. Lately, I've been playing it on PC before going to bed, to chill out a bit instead of punching a wall in my monitor after a long pit session. The absolute perfect game for when you need to relax, when you're procrastinating at work, dropping a log or driving somewhere. Okay, perhaps not that last one, Illamau. Oh, and by the way, the game is free to play. And by scanning my QR code or using the link in my description, you'll get a bunch of goodies along with the Tayrell Champion. And on level 25, the Giga Busted Champ Rector Drath. And not only that, if you're playing before the 31st of May and head on over to the Spring Hunt website, then you can enter your gaming ID, win some gaming consoles, as well as some extra loot. Bruh, they're literally giving away stuff for free. So scan that QR code ASAP and I'll see you in Raid My Man. By stacking fury on kill on weapons and rings, you'll be spawning twisters like crazy. There is however a caveat here. Since you need to kill enemies to spawn a ton of twisters, the build is dog shit for bossing. But it's still funny as hell, so I definitely recommend using this whenever you're up for a long grinding session or doing something mindless like, I don't know, doing taxes or whatever humans like doing. All right, that's the Ooga Booga of D4. Let's check out the Cocaine Grasshopper now. We'll start with the best build, and oh hey, will you look at that? It's Makuna on top again. What a surprise. Sorcerers are quite possibly at the bottom as pit pushing class in season four, 
which let's face it, is where they belong. But still, this guy makes it work. And this time, Makuna is rocking the Immortal Firebolt setup. This one's quite beautiful. By stacking cooldown reduction along with a shit ton of flame shield ranks, the cooldown of flame shield is reduced significantly. When this is combined with the hectic aspect, flame shield duration on gear, and a bunch of attack speed, well then, immortality is achieved. And the man himself is doing this even without having hectic on the amulet, which would reduce the cooldown further. To inject cocaine into his scrawny sorcerer legs, he's also rocking the teleport enchantment and attacks reduce evade cooldown on boots. This allows him to constantly keep teleporting and become hecking fast. So where does the big dam come from? Well, the big dam is no bar big dam, but big dam regardless. And this comes from Firebolt. This skill got some sneaky buffs by allowing us to temper extra projectiles and fire damage over time, but also a new unique, the Flame Weaver. By dropping a firewall on enemies and spamming Firebolt, the skill goes from mediocre to pretty damn good. Okay, that's the best build. What is the most fun then? Well, in my opinion, it's the Frozen Orb Sorcerer build. And for this, we have the Mobilitics God Lurkin build. This build has confirmed 105 pit clears, which is alright, but it's also hecking insanely fun. I managed to test this one a bit on the PTR, where it was both bugged and way stronger than this, and absolutely loved it. It has since then received a substantial nerf. But hey, 105 is no joke. What makes this build work is quite simple. It's the Fractured Winterglass Unique. By spamming Frozen Orb, we summon a bunch of Conjurations, which in turn summons Frozen Orbs for us. On top of that, it's also possible to get extra Frozen Orb projectiles on our weapons, as well as via the Frozen Orb enchantment. Combine this with a bunch of attack speed, and you have an unlimited amounts of Frozen Orbs. Now, while this build is amazing at speedrunning and clearing packs of enemies, the main issue it has is the single target damage. You'll be relying a lot to stagger bosses in high pit runs, and while you do stagger them easily, the damage is still pretty low. But overall, this build is by far my favorite sorcerer build I've tested in D4. And hey, perhaps I'll even make a guide on this channel one day. But probably not, because fuck Sork. <gasps> yeah, I said it. And you know it, baby. So that's the hentai enjoying living in my mom's basement class. Let's check out an actual build now. And it's of course the Sloth of Diablo 4, the Necro. Unless you've been either living under a rock or have been in a coma for the last month, you know that the Big Daddy Golem Necro is the best build. So instead of hearing about it for the gazillion time, let's check out a fun build instead. This one being the Bone Spirit build. This build has a confirmed clear at 115. And while this is impressive in itself, this was done in only 10 minutes. The best part about this build is that it doesn't use any brain-dead minions for damage, it's all you, baby. As long as there are enough enemies nearby, you'll be able to shoot out these Bone Spirits permanently. This is due to Enhanced Bone Spirit reducing the cooldown by 7 seconds, along with the Decrepify cooldown reduction sorting out the last second. And they're all critting for hundreds of millions. To deal this much big damn, the build is scaling via Overpower and Maximum Essence. The overpowers are coming from the Banished Lord's Talisman. But hey, isn't overpower shit now with all those nerfs? Nah man, those nerfs were mainly hitting the barbs because screw barb for some reason. Necros are still dealing big damn, due to the Blood Moon Britches granting an additional 70% damage. And that's on a goddamn armor piece. So not only are you getting the 50% extra damage from overpower in itself, you're also getting 70% here and 60% from the Banished Lord's Talisman. The rest of the scaling comes mainly from Maximum Essence. Bone Spirit deals more damage the more essence you have, and so does the Ossified Essence key passive. The problem with Bone Spirit, though, is that it spends all of your essence. But that is easily fixed now that you can temper a bunch of resource generation on your gear, 
And when you're up and running with this build, you'll just need to throw out one Decrepify, followed by a Bone Spirit, and they'll always overpower. And after that, you'll be getting all of the resource back instantly. Okay. And what about the defensives? Because this guy looks to be pretty tanky. Well, by grabbing Bone Storm along with slapping on the Shielding Storm aspect, you'll have that sorted with ease. Keeping the Bone Storm up permanently is no issue either, as you can just temper Bone Storm duration on gear now. All right, next we'll cover the Fatwood Chopper. Okay, so for the best build, we have the Wind Daddy. And while you could think that this is a para-gaming build name, it's not, it's actually what the build is called. I think it's safe to say that Ace is on of the best Druid players out there, and he has cooked up this insane build. This is another basic skill build, utilizing wind shear to deal big damn. So not only is it quite brain dead, which we love here at Para Gaming, but it's also an insane single target build. And the main aspect that makes this build work is the calm breeze aspect. By stacking a shit ton of attack speed and poison damage, the build dishes out insane amounts of damage over time. The Druid also has a bunch of lovely things going on for them in the Paragon tree that makes this work. For example, the Tracker and Bane Glyphs both substantially increases the poison damage. On top of that, Druid also has the best legendary node in the game, Thunderstruck. This node grants 20% multiplicative damage from damage to close or distant. And in Season 4, we can slap on a shit ton on our gear. This node is both a blessing and a curse, as you're basically forced to run storm skills if you want to scale high enough as a druid. Except for the build that I'm about to show you now, which is the fun build, coming in at a tier 105 clear, which is pretty damn solid. And it's a companion build, where the companions are not only used for granting you increases damage. Crazy, huh? Yeah. So why does this build work? Well, shit, son. Minions now inherit 100% of most stats. And spoiler alert, wolves are minions. And this build is working mainly by buffing them. This is done in a multitude of ways. By constantly shapeshifting, for example, you'll be granting your wolf friends a bunch of yummy skill tree buffs, where the most important one is bestial wrath. This does, however, require the wild rage aspect, but that's no issue as you'll just slap it on an armor piece. Apparently, this key passive also double dips, allowing the wolves to gain both buffs at once. The other main important way of buffing wolf damage is to transform them into werewolves via the alpha aspect. This both doubles their damage and allows them to spread rabies. And rabies is a serious illness caused by a negative strand RNA virus in the Rhabdoviridae family or in other words, a shit skill LMAO. There is, however, a great mobilitics guide for this one, and you'll find it in the description. Lastly, we have the Rogue. This class looked quite awful going into Season 4 when the PTR had finished, but since then, they received a bunch of sneaky buffs, and they're now looking to be the best class in the game. And for best build, we have the Heartseeker. This build was looking decent after the PTR, but oh man, is it goddamn nasty now. It's working mainly due to the victimized key passive being bugged as hell and Heartseeker having an insane level of lucky hit chance. Since the PTR, a bunch of smart people figured out all the double and triple dipping mechanics making this passive insanely broken. At least seven of these mechanics was found. And not only that, it was buffed further by allowing us to temper vulnerable damage on gear, which added hundreds, if not thousand of vulnerable damage to this bonus. Other than that, it's also extremely easy to play. As Heartseeker is literally an aimbot ability, you can just stand AFK in a corner, touching your P.E.K.K.A. or whatever, while you're clearing tier 120 pits with ease. Other than being a damage god, it's also unkillable, which a lot of ranged rogue builds are currently. This has a lot to do with the Umbrus aspect stacking up above 50% damage reduction. When combined with a shit ton of crowd controlled, 
It's easy to see why rogues are unkillable currently, all right? And that leads me to the last build, which is coincidentally the best of them all, obviously, because it's mine. It's the big dick barrage explosion build, shooting out shadow imbuements everywhere. And oh man, is this build fun. I'm addicted as hell to this build, and it's working simply due to the barrage buffs received in Season 3, along with the ability to now temper crit damage on gear and combining it with the precision key passive. The downside of this build is that you need to stand close to nuke down elites and bosses, but for speed farming, it's the absolute perfect build as everything around you just explodes from shadow imbuements. Combine this with shadow imbuement charges on your rings and you'll have shadow imbuement up for every barrage as well. Definitely check this one out if you like having fun. If you don't, well, screw you then. All right, I hope you found a fun build to play. If you didn't, then at least you got to experience my flawless jokes. And I'm leaving you with the best one. So a blind, a deaf, and a mute guy walks into a bar. The blind guy says, yo, what's up? The deaf guy says, yo, what's up? And the mute guy says, 